Hello everyone. Welcome to our Medicare 101 presentation. My name is Sarah Wallace. I'm there on the left for you. Hi everybody. I'm Karen Anderson. I'm over on the right. And we're here today to talk about the Medicare puzzle. We're going to help you solve it. Karen and I work directly for AAA. We're AAA agents and we're going to talk about all the pitfalls um, that come along with Medicare and hopefully help you avoid them. Right. And Sarah, I think uh, what I'd like to do is just uh, point out in case anybody is wondering how this works with AAA and Medicare. Um, we want to be sure that you know that we're Sarah and I are employees of AAA. And this is all we do here all week long from 9 to 530, Monday through Friday and sometimes Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And um, we are licensed in the state of New York to be Medicare benefit consultants. And I think a great point to make, uh, Sarah, and to you, everyone who's listening in, Sarah and I are Medicare plan brokers, which means we represent several of the largest Medicare health insurance companies that are available in New York State. We do not work for the uh, health, com uh, health, com health insurance companies. We're, we're uh, employees of AAA, but we are contracted to enroll people in all of these different Medicare plans. We are brokers and our first loyalty is to you as our AAA members. Uh, so we're helpful to, to we're, uh, we're very happy to be able to help you with your plans and uh, uh, help you relax and understand the information better and enroll you in a plan that's best for you. So, but go ahead, Sarah. I just thought I'd fit that in. That's a really great point, Karen. We take a look at all of the carriers across the networks and see what fits best for you. You know, we're not going to try to fit you into one of their plans. We're going to try to make sure it works the best for you. And as we go along today and talk about Medicare, we'll talk about how we do that and what pieces of information we need uh, for that. So moving right along, some common Medicare potholes we are going to talk about. Enrollment periods. When should you sign up for what? There's late enrollment penalties that you really want to avoid. So we'll talk about those. There's part B as in boy late penalties as well as D as in drugs for prescription drugs. So we'll talk about both those type of penalties today. We'll talk about physicians' networks and how those kind of affect your decisions for Medicare, as well as prescriptions and what is a formulary? <laughs> Why is it important? Finally, we'll talk about the difference between the Medicare Advantage and the Medicare Supplement Plan and how to uh, differentiate between the two. Moving right into it, the enrollment periods. If you are turning 65 or you're doing research for someone who is turning 65, you are here, right at that orange arrow. That's called your initial enrollment period. It is the seventh month window around your 65th birthday. It starts three months before, includes the month of your birthday, and continues for three months after your birthday. It's important to either sign up for Medicare during this time or have creditable coverage after the age of 65. So that means if you're still working after the age of 65, you've got to make sure your coverage is creditable um, in order to avoid any late penalties for B and D. So that's where the initial enrollment period comes in. It's the first time you can come into Medicare other than a disability situation. Um, most of the time, if you're joining our 101, this is you. However, you know, sometimes we get some repeats and that's okay. That's where the annual enrollment period comes in. And we're actually right in the middle of this right now. The annual enrollment period happens from October 15th through December 7th, and this is the time of year where every individual who is eligible for Medicare can add, change, 
or drop the Medicare Advantage or prescription Part D coverage. Um, this is really the time of year where you have control of your health care options and can uh, find a plan that best fits your needs. Like I said, Karen and I are right in the middle of this right now. We are packed with appointments talking about what's coming up for 2022. Um, so if you are already in Medicare and you need some help looking ahead, give us a call. That's what we're here to do. <laughs> so it's important to understand the annual enrollment period. Once you're in Medicare, that's usually the one time a year you can change your plan. This is also, guys, when you get all of the mail and all of the TV commercials and all of the radio spots and all you basically hear about is Medicare, and, and this is why. An unadvertised enrollment period that's available for our Medicare beneficiaries is the open enrollment period. So you won't hear about this one as much, and this is for those Medicare beneficiaries who are using a Medicare Advantage plan. It happens between January 1st and March 31st, and it's during this time individuals with an existing plan can change their coverage. So you've gotten into a plan during the annual enrollment period, you find it doesn't cover one of your doctors. Well, you should have come to me and Karen first, but in the case that you didn't, you still have the option to change to a plan where your carrier would be covered. So you won't hear about this one as much, but it is there for you. That's January 1st through March 31st, where everyone on a Medicare Advantage plan with an existing plan can change their coverage. The next enrollment period is actually a group of enrollment periods. These are triggered by specific events, and they're called a special enrollment period. Some things that are considered a special enrollment period are retirement after 65, moving out of your plan area, that's a special enrollment period, um, becoming eligible for extra help. So there are other times a year that you might be able to change your Medicare plan. If you think this is you, this is definitely the time to talk to an independent broker uh, who can help you find coverage in either your new area or for your new situation. So those are the four sets of enrollment periods that are really important to keep in mind um, when, it's, when you're on Medicare. So now that we talked about when, right, and then turn the timelines, let's talk about what it really means and what each piece does. I like to start with the alph alphabet soup because it kind of, you know, that's where everyone gets a little tied up. Which part does what and who handles which part? <laughs> so parts A and B are handled by Social Security. I'll go in depth a little bit more on what they cover, um, but A and B are covered by Social Security. You're gonna call or go online to the Social Security website to sign up for A and B when appropriate. I want you to think about Part D as a minimum level of prescription drug coverage that the government expects everyone over the age of 65 to maintain. All right, so that's where Part D comes in. It's a minimum level of coverage that the government expects everyone over the age of 65 to maintain. There are prescription drug plans. We'll talk about those in a little bit, um, but for this part of the presentation, just remember minimum level required. And then there's C. You go A, B, D, then to C. And Medicare Part C is a Medicare Advantage plan. Those are two terms for the same exact thing. And it wraps different pieces of A, B, and D together into one plan and one card. I'm going to let Karen go more in depth on the Medicare Advantage plans. For this part, I just want you to know that the Part C, anywhere you hear Part C, that is a type of plan offered by health carriers. All right, so A and B, what do they cover? 
A, I want you to think almost like a hotel bill for the hospital. It's the hospital care, what you'll be charged for staying. Part B is your medical insurance. In fact, it's only 80% of your medical insurance coverage. So this is where your hospital visits, your doctor's office, durable medical equipment like wheelchairs, surgeries, all of that is only covered up to that 80% if you only have original Medicare parts A and B. There's some other costs associated with original Part A and B. If you only have this coverage, you have a hospital inpatient hospital deductible, you're going to have a Part B, you know, you'll be responsible for that last 20%. You know, it only pays 80, you'd be responsible for all 20% afterwards, called a 20% coinsurance. And you know, you might think, oh, A and B, it's not that bad, 20% of one doctor's appointment, that's not a lot, but I really want you to think of 20% of a broken hip and hospitalization and physical therapy, surgery. Those are the kinds of things that we wanna come in and make sure that you're really not opening yourself up to some real financial hassle. So if you are just on A and B, you're only going to have 80% of your Medicare approved services covered. Now, to come in and cover that 20%, Karen's going to talk about your options. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. All right, everybody. So let's take a look at what your options are. And the way I like to explain it is, okay, you've got your Medicare card with your parts A and B. That Medicare card entitles you to 80% coverage of your medical bills. So here's what we want to do to mitigate that 20% coinsurance that you'll have. You have just two choices. There are two types of plans you can choose. You can choose a Medicare supplement plan, also known as Medigap, or you can choose a Medicare Advantage plan. And why don't we go into the next screen, Sarah, and take a look at what the differences are. Let's take a look at a Medicare supplement plan first. As far as medical Medicare supplement plans are concerned. Some of the great features with a Medicare supplement plan is there are no what are called networks. So what that means is as long as the, the facility or the provider that you're going to for services accepts Medicare, you will have availability of coverage wherever you are in the United States. What's nice about this type of plan as well is that in the state of New York, we have what's called guaranteed renewability, as long as your premium is paid. And the coverage and benefits never change. That's different than the Medicare Advantage plans, uh, but the Medicare Supplement Plan, it behaves like a true insurance policy. The plans are very comprehensive because they're also known as Medigap, plans. And the reason they're called that is because it really plugs that 20% gap that original Medicare does not cover for you. So outside of a small deductible at the beginning of each year, you are done. You don't have to worry about co-pays, co-insurance, anything like that. So if you want to go around the country and, and uh, travel and not worry about any bills to pay, Medicare supplement plan could be good, could be great for you. Keep in mind that a Medicare supplement plan does not include Part D, which is prescription drugs. But that's all part of the business. Sarah and I write these plans all the time. And with a Medicare supplement plan or a Medigap plan, we write what's called a standalone prescription drug plan so that you have coverage for your prescription drugs. So these plans are very comprehensive and they provide minimal or no out-of-pocket healthcare related expenses. And for a lot of people, that's great. Why don't we go to the next screen? 
All right. So now we're going to the other option that you have available to you, and that is the Medicare Advantage plans. And remember that a Medicare Advantage plan is the Part C of the A, B, C, and Ds of Medicare. So these plans cover all the medical and hospital, hospital services that original Medicare Parts A and B cover, except hospice care. What's nice about the Medicare Advantage plans is that, again, you can bundle all the services together, your plan, your Part A, your Part B, and your Part D. The Medicare Advantage plans also include your prescription drug coverage. And besides that, Another great thing is you get extra bells and whistles with a Medicare Advantage plan that you don't get on a Medicare Supplement plan. So things like uh, preventative dental, routine vision and hearing, gym memberships. Another thing that's become very popular the past couple of years, everyone has been over-the-counter medication and supplies allowances. So anything like even toothpaste, mouthwash, vitamins, uh, um, allergy medication, uh, you know, aspirin, pain reliever, first aid, anything you normally would throw in your cart and pay out of pocket for at the store, you can now order through your Medicare plan, through their catalogs, and it will be shipped directly to your home. And that can really save you some money. Um, some things to be aware of with the Medicare Advantage plans. They'll look similar to the types of plans that you're familiar with from um, having worked um, with health, uh, health coverage that you've had with your employer. In that, there are networks. You can have a Medicare Advantage plan that is an HMO plan, meaning you stay within a certain region of your home area. Uh, for instance, Western New York would be the eight county uh, area of, um, of, of a plan, of a, of a network. You can also have the PPO plans, which allow you for coverage within your network and also outside of the network. The Medicare Advantage plans are different from the Medicare supplement plans in that you'll have co-pays and you'll have um, co-insurance. There may be a deductible depending on the type of prescription medication that you take. And in this case, you're paying as you go. So for instance, if you go to see your primary care physician, you would have a copay. Um, with a Medicare supplement plan, that would already have been taken care of. That's built into the, the overall initial premium in the plan. So let's go to the next uh, screen, Sarah, please. All right, so let's take a look at covering uh, your options. Now we've got the Medicare supplement plan on the left, the Medicare Advantage plans uh, on the right. So take a look at those differences. The Medicare supplement plan, you've got the zero to low out-of-pocket expenses when used. And on the Medicare Advantage side, typically uh, lower monthly premiums. And as far as Medicare supplement, no networks. Coverage travels wherever Medicare is, ex as, is accepted. So that's a very flexible plan to have. Um, in the Medicare Advantage side, you have the higher out-of-pocket uh, coinsurance and co-pays, but it does include the prescription drug coverage, where separate prescription coverage will be needed with your Medicare supplement plan. With the Medicare supplement plans, benefits don't change for the life that you have this of this plan that you have it. So it's really more of a, more of an insurance uh, policy. What you sign up for is what you'll continue to have as long as you have that plan. Um, on the Medicare Advantage side, um, there is coverage that's ac accessible in regional networks only. Uh, however, there are sometimes extra benefits are offered. So keep in mind, preventative dental, 
gym memberships are so uh, popular, as well as over-the-counter medication and um, preventive dental, if I haven't already said that, uh, vision and health, uh, and a lot of other things that are offered through these plans. And you will see that these plans will have some changes each year. And that's why we have the Medicare annual enrollment period to give you the opportunity to compare all the plans. And that's why Sarah and I can save you a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of, um, I don't want to say stress, <laughs> but mm. a lot of headaches having to go to each plan separately, either online or making an appointment with all these separate uh, health insurance companies. Sarah and I have all the information here at our fingertips, along with um, our colleague, uh, Michelle Hefferly. And between the three of us, we can find a plan that suits you best. So uh, why don't we go to the next screen, Sarah? Well, real quick, I'd like, if you don't mind, Karen, I want to clarify sure. something you said. You know, both of these plans have their pros and cons, but the one thing you got to remember is you're not married to it. You know, if you think you're going to have a good year coming up, this plan, you know, might be a better option for you. If you know you've got some surgeries coming up, we can look at that for you, too. So you're not stuck with it for life. That's the whole point of the annual enrollment period, that you can change it at least once a year if you need to. And then one more point on traveling. Um, you know, it, we have a lot of travelers here at AAA. The Medigap plan, while it has no networks, that's good if you're going to use regular doctor services out of network. If you're out of the area for, you know, a good amount of the year, you need things like chiropractor, doctor visits. That's where the supplement travel, you know, not having a network might come in. Now, if you're traveling and just want to make sure you at least have emergency coverage out of network, the Medicare Advantage plans do have emergency and urgent care coverage out of network as long as you're within the United States. So there is a little, you know, there is that coverage. We don't want you to think if you're out on vacation and you break a leg, you won't have coverage. You will. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Right, Sarah. Thanks for mentioning that, too. That's that's a great point to bring up. And also thanks, too, for the point that, you know, everyone, like she said, you're not married to these plans. And I think that right there helps people feel more relieved, knowing that this isn't a lifetime decision that you're making that you can never turn away from. Um, you can always find uh, another plan coming up with the next annual enrollment period. And uh, but Sarah and I also have uh, special enrollment period ways of, of helping you if you need to make a change during the year outside of the annual enrollment period. All right, let's take a look at prescription drug coverage and prescription drug coverage really is an important part of Medicare because of all the expense that's associated with prescription medication. I don't know about many of you who are listening uh, in with us today, but <laughs> I've sure had some white knuckle rides to the pharmacy concerned about just how much my copay was going to be for a new medication. Um, so this is what Sarah and uh, Michelle and I really key on when we're putting Medicare plans together uh, uh, to um, recommend to you, is we take a look at the prescription medication that you take. And that's what helps us determine which of the Medicare Advantage plans might be best for you. So let's take a look at what the um, uh, prescription drugs uh, are like. In the United States, prescription tiers, you have five. Tiers one through five, and as far as the least amount of cost uh, goes, they are associated with tiers one and two. Those are your generic tiers. So if at all possible, if um, your body tolerates taking uh, generic uh, medications, um, uh, try to go with the generic medications if expense is um, a factor for you. And for most people it is, why wouldn't it be? 
when you go into tiers three and four and five, see those dollar signs? <laughs> that means it gets progressively more expensive depending on the tier in which the drug falls. So anything you see on television with people living their wonderful, happy lives, which is fantastic, those are preferred, preferred medications. Those are fairly new. Generally, they don't have generic versions available just yet. And this is where the expense starts coming in, not only for the medication itself, but generally that's when some deductibles will start applying for most Medicare Advantage plans. Um, tiers one and two, the generics, you can just go into the pharmacy and pay very low co-pays for these types of medications. Starting with tiers three, four, and five, generally you can count on having to pay a one-time deductible each year, not per tier three, four, or five, but just any time you have one prescription in tier three, four, or five. That's when, they're, that's when a deductible will kick in. It's just one time a year. But still, that deductible can be fairly substantial. So Sarah and I and Michelle, we look for plans that have the lowest deductible for the type of prescription medications that you're on. Sarah, do you have anything else you want to add for the prescription medications? I will say this is a big, big part of our day. Um, which carriers charging you what for your prescriptions? You know, are you going right. to be in the donut hole? Which Karen will go in in just a moment. Um, another piece of this is, does your pharmacy play a factor? You know, there's preferred pharmacies, unpreferred pharmacies. So we'll go in and we'll see, does mailing your prescription save you a good amount of money? Well, how much? So just that, you know, this is where we can really do some digging for you. Let us know when we can help you. That's right. Thank you, Sarah. Another good point, too, with the pharmacies. All right, let's take a look at um, uh, the prescription drug costs uh, for uh, the rest of this year. And so have you ever been talking with friends or family members talking about how they're in the donut hole and they're not happy about it? <laughs> That's because when you're talking about Medicare and referring to the donut hole, it's not necessarily the most positive thing to have to deal with. And here's what this is all about. And everyone, um, in this case, it has no bearing on what plan you choose or what insurance company, health insurance company, you decide to go with. Everyone, we're all in the same boat here with uh, what's called the um, uh, prescription drug coverage gap. So here's how it works. Um, these plans, they recalibrate at the beginning of each year. And this is where you pay your co-pays and the, and the plans pay the remaining cost of the retail, uh, the remaining expenses for the retail cost of each drug. And you just keep going and, and uh, refilling your prescriptions, uh, paying your co-pays until in 2021, the retail cost of the prescriptions that you're uh, ordering reaches $4,130. And don't worry, you don't need to have to keep track of this because your friendly pharmacist will keep track of this for you. You know, it's all it's all in the uh, it's all in the uh, in the technology that's all brought up. So once you reach in any given year four thousand one hundred thirty dollars of the initial coverage of of your prescription medication, then you go into what's called the coverage gap. And when you get into the coverage gap, your co-pays go away and your responsibility for drug costs for both brand name and generic drugs will be 25% of the retail cost of that medication that you're on, all right? And then you stay in the coverage gap or the donut hole until your total out-of-pocket costs reach $6,550. And once it gets to that point, then you'll go out, you'll come out of the coverage gap, you'll go into what's called catastrophic coverage. And 
in that case, once you get to that point, then you'll only be paying either $3.70 for generic or $9.20 for brand name prescriptions or 5%, whichever is greater, until the end of the calendar year. Now, um, I found that most people have no concerns about going into the coverage gap. However, you know, we all work with some who may go into the coverage gap as early sometimes as March or even, even February, depending on the type of prescription medication that they're on. And that's why in so many cases, it's so important for us all as Medicare consultants to key on the type of prescription medication you're on and what each plan assigns as the retail cost because they're all able to assign their own uh, retail costs. So we wanna be sure to find the plan for you that has the lowest cost factor to keep you out of that coverage gap in the event you might be close. So that's what the coverage gap is all about. Now these figures, they all change a little bit. In 2022, the initial coverage, you can go up to $4,130. That's going to change in January. Um, and you can count on a change either up or down a little bit um, at the beginning of uh, each year. Um, so Sarah, anything you would wanna add to that? The only thing I just wanna make sure everyone understands is it's not always your out of pocket right it's uh the co-pays and the plan rem pays the remaining rx cost so it's your costs for your prescriptions and your carrier's costs so who's ever your your health care carrier's costs once those two add up to the four thousand one hundred and thirty dollars that's when we're in the coverage gap so karen and i do our best to either get you in and out as soon as possible or to delay delay it as far as we can the year. So just let us know if you're on one of those prescriptions you know is kind of tricky. We're here to help do the digging. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. So what are the next steps? Well, everyone, uh, we're so glad that you could join us today. Thanks so much for uh, signing up and being a part of this webinar. Next steps, set up an appointment. Sarah and Michelle and I would love to hear from you. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5.30 and Saturdays too. And this is all we do for AAA. And uh, so I'm Karen Anderson and there's my uh, contact information over there. And then Sarah, I'll turn the rest of the time over to you. Thank you guys for spending time with us today. I hope we've answered a good amount of your questions. Um, but again, we're here. Give us a call and let us know when you're ready to talk about Medicare. Thanks for choosing AAA. Have a great Thanks. day. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.